Let's explore this concept a little further. Was the death of Jesus an event, the death of Jesus on the cross, was it an event that brought an end to life or an event that brought an end to death and the death-causing principles and opened a way to eternal life? I'm going to say that again. Was the death of Christ on the cross an event that brought death? There was an event that brought death to death and the death-causing principle opening the way to eternal life. Well, let's look at uh, 2 Timothy 1, 8 to 10. So do not be ashamed to testify about our Lord or ashamed of me, his prisoner, but join me in suffering for the gospel. This is Paul writing to Timothy. Notice, join me in suffering. This is self-sacrifice. This is the principle of love. This is dying to selfishness, giving of self for advancement of a greater cause. This is the principle of love being lived out. By the, um, join me in suffering for the gospel by the power of God who has saved us and called us to a holy life. Not because of anything we have done, but because of his own purpose and grace. Saved us. Saved us from what? He has saved us, it says right here, who has saved us and called us to a holy life. Saved us from himself. Saved us from what he'll do to us if we don't let him save us. This is what's taught. You saw the, the cartoon, Jesus standing at the door, knocking at the heart, at the door, and he says, let me in. For what? So I can save you. From what? From what I'll do to you if you don't let me in. <laughs> do you understand that's most of Christianity? You let Jesus in, but if you don't, then he'll, uh, so he can save you. Well, what's he saving you from? For what he'll do to you if you don't let him in. He's, he's required to kill you, torture you. This is all corrupt. No. Jesus is the Lamb of God who takes away the punishment of God for sin. Is that what John said? That's what the scripture says. Hope, don't, don't listen to me saying that as if it's true. That's a lie. What did John the Baptist say? The Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. He came to take away the sin problem, the sin condition, the cause of death, the death principle. He came to take it away. This grace, listen to this now, this grace was given us in Christ Jesus before the beginning of time. That's not me, that's Paul. Let that circle. <laughs> this grace was given us in Christ Jesus before the beginning of time. Which came first, time or people? Well, God doesn't live in. Which came first, though, time or people? <laughs> what happened on day four of creation week? And the sun, moon, and stars were created to measure days, days and time. And, and so the time was already there. Then the measuring devices were put in, but the time was already there. What came first, time or angels? Angels. Time. Time. They don't live in time, though. Of course they do. Angels are linear beings. They do not live in infinite existence. They live in linear existence. One event follows another event for angels. So when we have eternal life, does time cease? Are we still living from one moment and moving it? We're moving through time. Will there be one Sabbath to another that all, 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 all the creation comes and worships God according to Isaiah 66, is it? So we won't live a day for a year like the scriptures? Come but is that a day for a year? Is that time? How do you, what do you understand time to mean? Time is moving through events where one event follows another event. It's a process of, of what's happening now did not happen 30 seconds ago. We live in time. We flow through time. Time, time existed before intelligent beings other than God. He lives outside of time. He created time. He controls time. He governs time. But he's not constrained by time. So the point being is, the grace was given us in Christ before the beginning of time. That means, as I understand it, before God actually began to create. Even angels. Even angels. They had a beginning. They had a beginning, that's right. Those may not have an end, but they did have a beginning. Grace is not something new. 
It is, an, it is found in the character of God and is part of the eternal good news that we in the three angels' messenger take to the world. The eternal good news, the good news that has always been true through all eternity past and will always be true through all eternity future, which is the good news about God. God's character is love. And God in his foreknowledge living outside of time Look down through time, because to God, past, present, and future are like outspread. And God knew what was going to happen, and God, in his character of love and grace, this grace was committed to our salvation before he even began creation. He was in Christ, already there. But now, continuing on with this. Before the beginning of time. But it has now been revealed. It was there before the beginning of time. But now it has been revealed through the appearing of our Savior, Christ Jesus, who has destroyed death and brought life and immortality to light through the gospel. Jesus' death wasn't the death that ends life. It was the death that ends the cause of death. That destroys sin. That destroys rebellion. That destroys... Satan and Satan's power of death, Hebrews 2.14. He took upon himself human flesh that by his death he might destroy him, holds the power of death, that is the devil, Hebrews 2.14. And fully restores God's living law of love into the species human, which he perfectly restored to unity with God. In Jesus Christ, humanity, we have a human being who lived perfectly the law of God and reconciled the species to unity with God and he sits at the right hand of God, a human being. When we think about the seed falling to the dirt, into the dirt and the ground and dying, that seed, as you throw it into the ground and plant it, still has the life-causing principle in it. Yes or no? Yes. But it dies to what it was so that it can live to a larger purpose in God's design. Jesus died as our Savior in order to destroy the infection of sin, but he still had the life-causing principle in him. Yes? yes? God made him who had no sin to be sin for us so that we might become the righteous of God. 2 Corinthians 5.21 Jesus died to destroy sin, Satan, death, Satan's power, and Satan's work and restore God's law and character back into the living temple the human being where God designed for it to reside in Eden. He put it back, a living law that operates in harmony with God and is the protocol upon which life is built. We just read 2 Timothy 1.10 about destroying death. And I, I quoted Hebrews 2.14 where he destroys Satan and Satan's power. And then 1 John 3.8, the reason the Son of God appeared was to destroy the devil's work. Notice he destroys death. He destroys Satan. He destroys Satan's power. He destroys Satan's work. And what is Satan's work? What has Satan worked to accomplish? There you go. Exactly correct. Satan's labor or work is to efface the image of God in human beings and to put Satan's image where God should be. As we approach the end of time, you will see an ever-increasing marked contrast in people. People who are indwelled by the Holy Spirit will grow more and more into Christ-likeness. If you value what Ellen White wrote... She actually said right before the appearing of Christ, they will actually begin to radiate light like Stephen did before he was stoned or like um, Elijah and Moses did on the Mount of Transfiguration or Moses did coming off the mountain. Because they're so indwelled with the Spirit, the loving energy of God radiates from them. They become more and more like Christ. Whereas Satan is working to efface the image of God and create a species of, that the Bible refers to in Revelation, instead of we are a temple where God dwells by his spirit, Revelation refers to these people as the synagogue of Satan. They become the synagogue of Satan. I see it in the world. Just look at the debasement, the corruption, the perversity, the, 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 the villainy, 
And notice that some of the worst villainy are not the people with, ha- with having tattoos all over their face. That is not the villainy. The worst villainy are the people who stand there proclaiming to be angels of light. Claiming that they're here to save lives. Make the nation better. Protect the innocent. But what they do is a violation of God's laws and designs and are corrupting to the character. And it's fear-driven, not love-driven. I could go on all day. I'll give you lots of examples. We have to go on because I have a bunch of fun stuff in the lesson.